everyone. Welcome to Brush Making. I'm Addie. I'm Abby. And today we are going to show you some basics of brush making. Um, we have the live chat going. I just dropped a link for some files. If you haven't downloaded them to prepare in advance, you can. Um, highly recommend those. There's a, a shape, like a flat image file, and then two brush files. So you can download those to prepare. Cool. Yeah, the um, shape you're going to be using to make a brush with in the beginning, and I'd like it would be really good if you could follow along because then you'll get a real understanding of how it's going to work um, and how to do it. Yeah, um, definitely leave any questions that you have as we go. We'll try to keep up with them. If not, we'll wrap up with questions at the end. Yeah. Um, but without further ado, should we get into it? Cool. Okay, so the shape that was included with um, uh, Addie's download is a sort of, you'll, hang on, let me, we're going to make a brush using it. So let me go and find it. Uh, it's this one here. Now, I've just inserted it as an image here so you can see it. Um, and we're going to go ahead and make a new brush. So when you open the brush interface, you'll see all the brush um your brush packs on the left and then all your individual brushes on the right and this plus at the top will let you make a new brush if you want to make a new brush pack you pull down and then that plus should stay there and that will help you make a new brush set so we can pull this new yeah okay and let's do it inside new so we'll make a new brush and then I want that shape that I sent you. So head to this tab here, which says shape and go to this button at the top right of the image that says edit and import. There are lots of ways to import a shape. You can um, copy the shape from the canvas that you're using in Procreate, or you can import a photo or you can use their source library. So let's import the photo. Okay, and you'll notice that now the shape is black and the background is white. And in brush making, the white is what's actually going to make a shape on your canvas. So we want to invert this. So we actually want the black shape to be white and we want the white to be black. So the way to do that is you tap it with two fingers like this. There we go. Okay, and hit done. If you don't hit done, nothing will happen and it'll go back to the um, previous shape and you'll be sad. Yeah, you okay. want to be sure not to navigate into the other options. Exactly. Before hitting done. Because it can get very irritating. Okay, it looks like we just got a, f a lot of extra people in here, like a, a bunch of you just joined us. And so um, really quick to reset, we're yeah. making brushes and going through some of the very basic intro steps to making brushes. This is the first of, I believe, three sessions that we're going to do. Yeah. Um, and Abby is showing us how to make just a very basic brush and to show us the inner workings and attributes and behavior of a brush. Okay. So it, here is, it, on this side is your testing pane. So you'll see that it's actually um, the shape is, you can't see the individual shapes. So what we're going to do is here in stroke path, we're going to make them be further apart so we can actually see them. And now we can see what the shape is doing when you move your brush. When you uh, make a new brush, it automatically defaults to have the opacity um, influenced by pressure. Now, just for this demonstration, I'm going to turn that off so that it doesn't interfere with what we're doing. Okay, so let's test what we've done so far. Hang on, I have a canvas that I just make a new one. Okay, so what does this look like? You can see that the shape that we put into the brush is being stamped in the same orientation that it is um, in your on your screen. 
And if you want that to be the case, then you leave it. Um, but then if you turn your iPad this way, on, let's go back to the canvas and you do it, it will orientate itself um, according to your, um, to your screen. So if it's, I don't know if you can see, the little arrows are aiming to my right. Yeah. And so when I have my iPad in portrait mode, the arrows are still aiming right. If yeah. I have it in landscape mode, which is the same as in the brush image, they're aiming right. So does it rotate is, when you rotate your canvas as well? Uh, yes, it does. Okay. So let's see here. Let's clear this canvas. See, they're still aiming right. Okay. And that that um, characteristic is caused by this. If you tap properties, you'll see there's this toggle switch that says orient to screen. And that is always going to make it aim orientated to the can the bottom of your screen. So if you swivel your canvas, it will always orientate parallel to the bottom of your screen. So let's turn that off and see how else we can influence the way that the shape moves. So now we're not orienting it to the screen. And we're going to go to the shape tab and we actually want to make it follow the direction of the brush stroke. So this slider here called rotation dictates how it follows your brush. And now you can see the little arrow is pointing in the direction of my brush stroke. And I think that this is closer to actual um, like brushes on paper, this behavior. Yeah, yes. It depends how you move your brush, but yes, on the whole, yes. Okay, so now we know how to make it follow the direction of the pencil. What if you, oh, brilliant. Some <laughs> alarm is going. <laughs> <laughs> what if you don't want it to follow the direction of your pencil? What if you want it to actually be in all orientations? You can make it scatter. So this slider dictates how much or how little it will be um, randomly orientated on your canvas like that. Now, the orientation of the shape on that little square is very important because the left hand side, I mean, sorry, my left and right are garbage. The right hand side is the leading edge. It's always the leading edge. So this side of your shape is always going to be coming first. So if you're having it following your stroke, that will be coming first and it will go that way. Um, there's also another very nice thing that you can do, um, and it's here. You can flip the x-axis or the y-axis as you go. So let's make it follow the stroke and flip the x-axis. So now it's still orientated in one direction, but it's flipping back and forth and the leading edge is changing. Yeah. And and flip Y does the same thing, but it flips it in this direction. And so, it, does it alternate or is it randomized? It's random. It's completely random. See, some of them are the same. Some of them are different. Okay. Uh, okay. Then you can also influence the size of that shape using the dynamics tab and the size slider down here in Jitter. You can make your the size of your shape um, bigger and smaller and changing as you go. And that's sometimes really nice if you're making a brush that you want to have a really um, uneven edge, like a bumpy um, effect or a wobbly edge. It's yeah. difficult sometimes to um, create a subtle bumpy edge but with the size difference, you can get it to do that quite easily. So this is all a size, that's with the size jitter slider. So now you can, and oh, sorry, other one. If you want to make, let's say, uh, what's that uh, photo effect called? Bokeh, bokeh. 
you know. Oh, the, yeah, a book, that book. Yes, that. Yeah. You can make that sort of kind of brush if you um, alternate the opacity of your little dots. See? Oh, yeah. Now, let's turn that off. If we go back to the shape and we make it, let's make it scatter. Now, let's say you want to make a glitter brush or um, something like scattered stars or like a burst of something. You want, and you, you might want your shape to jump all over the place. You go into stroke path and you can increase the jitter. So now the shape is, is going to be randomly distributed um, across your stroke. And that's where the, say the word again, bokeh. Bokeh. <laughs> and then you can add some opacity jitter and suddenly you've got a brush that can make that effect. Yeah, so if you, um, we'll get into the source library in a moment, but you'll be able to pull shapes that will work to create that instant bokeh effect that are a little blurry around yeah. the edges. And now, let me just show you. Okay, let's make the shape follow the pencil. Now, you can see when you make the, sh the shape closer and closer together, it'll eventually become one line. And that's when you want the um, Apple Pencil to influence the size. If you want it to get big and small and the opacity, if you want it to get see-through and dark. This blend mode is... Okay. Yeah, and so what a brush is, is it's a bunch of these individual shapes. Um, yeah compressed or extended in a single line yes, exactly. or stroke. Exactly. And so all of those those attributes affect it in different ways. And when you jump into the brush studio and, and start playing with some of the dials, uh, mm -hmm. you'll see that things interact differently. And so um, one setting will just totally change the size, even if you're not only changing the size setting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like the taper, et cetera. Yeah. Okay, Addy is going to show you how um, how to make a stamp brush. Like yes. A, yeah. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is you always want to make your stamp shape on a square canvas. If you import a shape, as a rectangle, it'll skew it to either squish it down into a, um, a square shape. So start out with a square shape. My canvas is 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. That's um, my favorite size too. I always use that size. It's it's nice because you have enough layers to work in um, without running out, but you still get really nice resolution. And this is 300 DPI. And we're going to turn on symmetry. So. To do that, we're going to tap the, the wrench here. And under Canvas, I'm tapping Drawing Guide and then Edit Drawing Guide. And it has this symmetry option here that mine is already set on. And under Options, I'm going to select Radial and make sure that for, for what I'm doing, I want rotational symmetry off. And then I'm going to tap done. And when I tap into my layers, you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that assisted is below the layer name. Um, and if it isn't, you can tap it to bring up the side menu and then tap drawing assist and that will show up. And that just means that the symmetry is on. Um, and so to start, Start. I'm just pulling a brush from the inking panel. I'm going to use the studio pen. And we can just, I seem to have made my drawing guide invisible. Let me go back and change that quick. <laughs> um, when you're making brushes, um, 
it's it's actually really handy to use the drawing guide because of the way that the shape orientates within the brush then you can always know where the center of the shape stamp is going to be so if you deliberately want your shape stamp to be off to one side you can make sure that the part that you want to be hanging off isn't at the center of the brush if that makes sense yeah if if anybody that is joining us right now is here for our wreath brush session in December, we oh, yes. talked through that a lot because we were making brushes where the shape was off centered. Yeah. Um, and so after this session, if you want to learn more, you can for sure check that one out. Yeah. And here I'm just drawing a leafy little mandala here, adding in some details. And the nice thing about symmetry is that it it just kind of like always turns out no matter what you're drawing. It's quite forgiving. I like that. <laughs> yes. Okay, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to go into my wrench here and under add, I'm going to copy canvas. And move on to a new layer for the next one. And then I'm going to just create a new brush. If you already made this stamp brush with Abby's steps, um, you can just duplicate that by swiping over. Uh, I was not following those steps. So I'm gonna start from scratch here, tap into shape, edit shape source, and then import and under import, I'm going to hit paste. And that will paste that in. Once again, I'll need to invert it. So I'll use two fingers to tap once on the screen. And as a note, when you're here with a mandala, of course, it's symmetrical and so rotating, it won't make any changes. But if you do have a shape that you maybe copied the, um, the image while it was um, sideways or something, you can just use two fingers to rotate like you would rotate the canvas while you're painting. Yeah, that's then I'm going to tap. Yeah, then I'm gonna tap done to save my changes. And I should note too, when you're rotating, you can only rotate in 90 degree increments. And so if you need to rotate it diagonally, you'll need to either resave the image or um, rotate it using this panel here. So once I have my shape imported, I am going to go into spacing first of all. So that's under stroke path and I'm going to increase the spacing a lot. And then under Apple Pencil, pressure, uh, the opacity setting here is set to maximum and I'm going to take that down to none. And for a um, mandala again the orient to screen doesn't matter because it's it's round it's totally symmetrical but i am going to go ahead and turn that off um for just because <laughs> um and and then you have your stamp brush and so you can play around with the maximum size and make it nice and big if you are using this maybe for a template to then color in um you can make it super large um and, and that's, I think, all I'm gonna set on this. Um, once you're happy with your brush, if you wanna go and test it outside of the drawing panel, you'll wanna be sure to hit done here to save your changes. Mm -hmm. And then you can test it here. And then when you're ready and, and totally finalized with your brush, you can go into the about this brush um, panel and you can give your brush a little name and import a photo and sign it and then create a reset point. So I'm going to just yeah, it's really, do. It's really nice to be able to sign your brushes and make, make them your own. Yeah. And then create a new reset point and save. And after you hit save, it'll still show as editable. But once you tap done here, and go back into it. Oh. No, once you've added your name. So where it says made by name. Oh. Photo, once you've added that, it's Dunsies and you cannot change it again. 
And that is sort of a security measure so that people can't nick other people's brushes. Yeah. And it is also nice. I'm assuming it's because I haven't added a photo, but <laughs> it is also nice to have that reset point that you can go back to because I change a lot of brush settings yeah. of all brushes that I use and having that back to zero point without having to re-import the brush is yeah. just really nice. That said, you should definitely always back up your brushes on um, an external hard drive or on your computer just in case um, it's super rare for Procreate to erase anything through automatic updates, but it's a good safety measure. Yeah, bad things happen to good people. So <laughs> It's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I am going to switch back over to Abby for some in-depth learning on grain. Oh, hang on, you're gonna show them how to make a pattern brush out of the mandala. Oh, you're right. <laughs> okay, don't worry. Keeping me on track. Um, the Pink Tree Portfolio uh, asked a good question, what is a reset point? And that is just, let me, go into, I'll go into one of Abby's brushes. So if I go in to Inky Velvet, um, you can see here there's this last reset point, which I think was probably when I last imported the brush and, or no, when you saved it, probably. Yeah. Um, and so if I were to go in and adjust these settings and then hit done, those settings will stay adjusted. If I wanna go back to how Abby saved the brush, I'm able to tap reset and it'll take it back to that point yeah. that she created the brush with. And you'll see streamline is set to zero. Um, if you hit create a new reset point, that oh, will save any changes. Something bad happened. That's super strange. I don't know what's going on with that. <laughs> oh well. All right, anyway, that's if that answers your question, um, that's what a reset point is. So then to create a pattern brush with your stamp shape, what we're going to do is once again, make sure that I have this copied. So I'm gonna copy the canvas and this time, go back into, I lost where I was. <laughs> All right, we'll just make a new brush from scratch. We're gonna go over these steps several times. All right, so this time, instead of importing the, the shape into the shape source, we're going to import it into the grain source. So under grain here, I'm going to tap edit and import and then paste. And once again, I'm going to invert this. Then I'm going to hit done to save that. And hang on. <laughs> After I've imported it, I'm going to tap auto repeat and we're gonna go in there. And from here, you can adjust your grain. And so because this is just a single shape, I'm, I'm just going to like center it on the canvas and make sure that this is all off. But if you have um, a smaller shape that doesn't take up the entirety of the square, you can then adjust the, the grain scale in here. You can rotate it. Um, yeah, I like the rotate feature that and that adds sort of. Yeah, um, it can make it look a, a little more random and not quite and so basically tiled. You can also make it look really freaky if you like make it really big and move it to a different spot. So the center is C, you can make really cool patterns. How rad is that? Yeah. It's also just like a very cool feature that yeah. is hidden deeply within Procreate. So there's, there's a lot that you can do with that. Here, I'm just going to bring it back to the center and tap done to save and now you can see my brush size is super small, but we have this automatic repeating pattern as easy as that. And so 
to make it easier to use this as an actual pattern brush, I'm going to go into um, properties and increase the size. And under Apple Pencil, I'm going to turn down opacity to none. And then under Stroke Path, if you increase the spacing, it'll also allow you to increase the size any further further than what you had. And so if, um, if you run into a limit and you want to still make your brush larger, that's a way to do that. And you can yeah. also increase minimum size, which will increase that. So then under grain, um, it's already set to rolling. And so that will allow uh, the grain to behave as we want as a single pattern. And um, we can just exit out of this. Go on to a new layer, choose a fun color and Pretty. There we have a pattern. Yay. It instantly looks, looks cool. Looks like floor tiles. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, um, so next we have a couple steps with the grain portion that we want to go through. Yeah. We're going to go touch on the source library. And if you haven't yet, be sure to download the Dropbox files that we have. They are linked in the description. And also at the top of chat, there is a basic pattern brush template file that you can use if you don't yeah. want to like get into the nitty gritty of adjusting these settings. Uh, that'll just help yeah. you jump in and get yeah. started. Okay, so um, this is what I made with Addy. Um, and then this is the pattern brush that I made because I moved that all the way to the side and it actually turned out pretty rad. Ooh, very cool. Cool, so we're gonna make a, a paper texture brush because paper texture brushes are really cool. They absolutely up the coolness of any piece that you make. You can paint something really boring and flat and just add some paper texture and boom, amazing. So I gave everybody this brush uh, pattern brush template so hang on here let me put it in here I just duplicated it when you want to make a new one this is how you duplicate a brush you swipe left tap duplicate bam and it adds a little one at the end that's why sometimes when I'm scrolling through my brushes you might notice there's like a brush with like a thousand ones after it it's because I duplicate and then tweak and duplicate and tweak and the reason I duplicate is so that I can go back to the other one and compare them side by side and go, okay, no, this one is better. That one is better. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. It's, it's nice to have a copy. I feel like I do that probably with all of my files. I'm definitely a digital hoarder, Same. but with brush files too, it's, it's an easy way to quickly save your previous version. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so with a pattern brush, what you want to do is exactly as Addie ex explained, you want the spacing to be quite big. So I've got it on 17 here. It could get bigger, but it's up to you. Properties, you want the brush size to be mahoosive so that you can cover a whole um, canvas in one couple of goes. And then the rendering is also quite important because when you're looking at a texture, you don't want it to be very big like punchy black and white you actually want the subtleties and light glaze is the best blend mode or rendering mode for that it what it does is um for example if you um took a black and white photograph of someone and put it into your grain of your brush and then you paint it on the um, canvas the black and white photo would come out exactly as the black and white photo is but if you put it on uniform glaze, it would come out as a much darker version of that. Intense glaze, darker again. Heavy glaze would be very contrasty. Uniform blending would be quite uniform, as the name implies. And intense blending would be even more contrasting. So for pattern brush and for a paper texture brush, I always use light glaze. 
Um, okay. And for any uh, Photoshop users, I believe uniform blending is the equivalent of what all Photoshop brushes are set on. The Procreate brush engine is much more nuanced than the Photoshop brush engine. But if you're looking for equivalencies, that is one example. OK. I don't know anything about Photoshop. So <laughs> OK. So we're going to go into grain because we don't want this grid. This grid is from the source library within Procreate. They've got this as one of your grain uh, grains you can choose from. So now we actually want a paper texture. So we'll go edit, import, and go to the source library because the source library has got some really cool paper textures. It's got canvas texture. It's got um, oil pastel, sketch paper, blah, blah, blah. Just be careful though with some of their um with some of their can you hear the kookaburra? <gasps> yes. <laughs> That's um, so cool. Yeah. With some of their grains, they don't repeat perfectly, but that's not a problem um, with the paper textures that they have. So let's choose one. My absolute favorite is this one called recycled. Okay. So you can see that. What is going to show here is the little white bits and the gray. The black is going to remain un, um, it's going to be the alpha, it's the see through bit. So that looks good. And I and think that's what the texture looks like. I think something that helped me get it is the, the Procreate handbook has the equivalency of the grain being like a, a paint roller and the white of a grain is as though it were raised and the, the black of the grain is what's indented. So that's not going to show yes. up. Yeah, that's that's a very good way to explain it. Okay, so let's see, hang on, let's turn off this canvas drawing guide. So here we've got our canvas and we're going to put our paper texture over it. That looks pretty good. Um, I usually put my paper textures over in gray because gray gives you a little bit more um, forgiving uh, effect. I put the top one to color burn, the bottom one to linear burn, drop the opacity. And now let's see some watercolor jazz underneath this. Oh, it's tiny. See, it looks really nice. Beautiful. So paper, paper textures are the way forward. It really makes such an instant impact on it your does. work. It does. So um, let's, let's change this paper texture brush to another one. Here's our paper texture. Let's swap the texture out. Maybe we'll go for paper macro. Cool. Done. Done. Choose gray. Gorgeous. It's even, maybe we can even swap it out for, let's swap it maybe for one of their sort of grungy textures like charcoal rough. Maybe you want to create an interesting texture over an entire drawing and drop the opacity and put it on color burn and then you can draw something and everything you draw will have that lumpy texture yeah it just makes such a big difference and it's it's i think it's like the number one question that i get asked is how do you get a paper texture um yeah, and this so is this is even better because you can make your own unique ones yeah Addie's going to show you how to make one from a picture from Unsplash. Yeah. So I have the link to the photo in, um, in the description. Um, and if I can get my thing to work, I'm going to pull up Safari here. And if you just type in paper texture at Unsplash, you can come across all of these really cool paper textures. 
uh, totally free. You can use them for commercial pur purposes. I am going to choose this nice texture from Olga here. Again, the link to this. The Olga one. I've got, I'm like, Olga, thank you. Like it's this. such a good one. <laughs> so again, the link to this exact one is in uh, the video description. And I'm going to hit download. Download again. And save this to my camera roll. And then I'm going back into Procreate here. And you can duplicate the texture brush that we just made and go into grain. Oh, that's not what I'm doing here. <laughs> We're gonna go into camera roll first because we wanna prep the file. Yeah. So I'm going to go into my photos and if you tap into the photo, so you can see it comes in as a rectangle, and I'm going to tap edit. And I hope you might not be able to see much of the grain texture here. It looks like it might be a little bright on the screen. But what we're going to do first is um, increase the contrast. So that's this solid half circle here. And I'm going to increase it quite a bit because that will be what will show when we make it into a brush. Once that contrast is set at minus 100, I'm going to tap the crop feature and crop this into a square. And if you're working on something that has a lot of variance in the texture, a lot of um, variety, maybe there's like a splotch or something, this is your chance to um, crop out anything that you don't want that might become an uh, obvious part of the repeat when we make it into a, a brush. Yeah, it's not nice when you make a paper texture and there's like one little drop of paint that some that was on the original picture and it makes little squares. So there's like this grid and you think it's yucky. Yeah, it's just very apparent when it's a repeat. So then back in, we're under, uh, we're in the duplicated texture brush and under the grain here, I'm going to tap edit and then import and import a photo and bring that in. And I already have it inverted. Um, is that right? Yes. Black okay. And a bit of white. That's right. Okay. I must have, oh, we don't need that. All right. So when I just pull it in, you can see that obviousness of the repeat. So there's uh, like a darker shadow here on the edge. So to yeah. change that, what we're going to do is go back into edit under grain and under auto repeat, you'll be able to see maybe let me, let me invert it once more. Okay. So it's just hard to, it's hard to see the contrast. So I, I apologize if it's not quite coming through for you. Um, but here you can adjust the grain scale and you can kind of see those blurry moving edges. Um, that's the edge of the repeat. And so this is your chance to smooth out those edges. I usually have pyramid blending on, but mirror overlap off. Yeah, um, mirror overlap, it, it's not great for um, creating a seamless texture. It's nice for making a, a simple pattern, but for making a texture, it just looks really sort of um, like an ink blot test kind of went wrong. Yeah, I would imagine also maybe for, for grids or lines, it might be more useful. But if you're having a, a texture that has a lot going on, it's not good. I'm going to leave it about there and hit done. And it's nice to have the hard copy saved on your camera roll because then you can go back uh, and adjust it in the auto repeat if um, 
say you didn't realize you were cropping out part of the texture that you wanted to actually use. So we're going to invert it again back to this dark setting. And then I'm going to tap done to save the changes and set this layer here to multiply. I have just a mid-tone gray selected. And with one single continuous stroke, I'm gonna fill the whole screen. And then when I go down to the layer beneath it, if I choose a watercolor brush here, you can see that nice texture. Yeah, it's lovely. Olga. She took Thank you, Olga. Yeah. <laughs> well done, Olga. Um, Angel Song asked, can you show how to make a hard edge watercolor brush? And I wanted to address that question because we're showing these watercolor brushes, but that's, um, we will touch on some of the water aspects of the brush studio in one of these later sessions. Yeah. Um, but that might be out of the scope of the time that we have yeah. tonight. Yeah, yeah, we've got it, yeah. Um, yeah. But I, let's see, looking at the other questions, Amal asked what option, let me show this on the screen for everybody. What option to make the brush give the same color without shadows when I raise my hand in color again? So I think you mean um, multiple strokes without getting this darker overlap, correct? That is and multiply in brush settings in but, a rendering. But okay, to do yeah, it with... I can show you what that's all about. So um, I'll make a new brush and just turn off that opacity, right. And I'm just going to leave it exactly straight out of the box as Procreate um, gives you a new brush. I turned the opacity influenced by pressure off. We're going to go to rendering um, and make it light glaze. If you, you see down here where it says blend mode. If you have it set to multiply, then look here. You can pick a color in the drawing pad, just by the way, if you ever want to do that. So set to multiply see it go as it goes over another bit of color it will multiply and make it darker so just as blend modes work in layers they work in brushes as well so if i have this set to let's say add see it does what add does in blend modes it makes it bright if i have this set to uh color burn it makes it dark again so if you don't want something a brush that makes an extra color and is see-through set it to normal so if you have a brush that's annoying you because every time you paint over a previous stroke you can see through it go to the blend mode and look for normal and bob's your uncle fixed and the again because things interact differently within procreate if you have a lower opacity that yeah. will also affect the layering of those strokes yeah um the the flow within rendering as well there's multiple things so if it is um if it's still doing that and you want to make sure that it, it doesn't layer those you'll want to check the um let me go in and and show you. I think um, pick a different brush is the answer. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um, but if you're if you're struggling with this in a brush that you're creating, yes. Um, if you go into properties, there's opacity settings here. There's opacity settings under rendering within flow. Yes. yes. Um, so there's there's multiple places that you'll want to check that. Yeah. Um, okay, Stacy asked, is anyone having trouble importing the brushes from the lesson files? And I am. <laughs> and so I apologize for that. I should have tested it and gotten it sorted beforehand. It's, I've been sort of discombobulated because I keep trying in between oh. my <laughs> portions to import them because I wanted it to be easier to follow along. So I'm so sorry they aren't working. We will be sure to get them posted at the end of the session. 
okay. um, so that you could go back and and try. I don't know if if yeah, we'll figure it out. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Um, oh, there was one more thing I wanted to show, and that was how to take a photograph with your iPad and instantly make a texture brush. So grab that pattern, that uh, paper texture brush that you just made, duplicate it so you don't lose it, and um, grab something that's got a nice texture. I just have this crap phone case from Kmart. It's got a nice gray fabric -y texture. It's also got my ticket for the boat on it um, <laughs> the boat. and go here to the uh, wrench not spanner to the wrench thing tap add you can tap take a photo which is pretty cool and let's take a photo um, it's a little bit difficult with... uh... yep that looks good. Right. Use photo indeed. Okay. And now you can see it's rectangular, but we want it square. Our canvas is square. So we're going to hit, make sure magnetics is on and hit fit to screen. And it instantly fits to the screen we've got. Now we want to put it in our brush. So we're going to go copy canvas and go here to the brush template that we made before, grain, edit, import, paste. Right, now we know that this doesn't repeat properly because we just took a photo of a phone case. So we have to do auto repeat. And now as Addy explained earlier, if there's something that's irritating, it's gonna repeat um, all the time, you need that out of the picture. So can you see this weird dot? Who knows what that is? Maybe some breakfast. Uh, <laughs> let's make it a bit bigger so that disappears that looks nice beautiful okay and done let's turn that off and I think it's worth noting too even if your picture is not in black and white when you import it it will turn yeah. to black and white so you don't need to worry about only taking pictures of black and white objects. Exactly, exactly. It will go black and white as soon as you import it. Another way to, to sort pictures out when they're in Procreate, let's say you've imported an image that you want to use as a brush shape, and it's now sitting on your square canvas in Procreate, and it's looking dodgy. Or let's say the edges of it aren't white, and they're sort of yellowy. Here we can, let's just do that quickly. So... Let's say, for example, I want to use my Apple mouse as a, as a shape. Let's take a photo. Okay. Use photo. And let's see. I want it maybe to be in this orientation like that. Okay, and the edges are, it's not square and it's not going to be perfect, so let's grab black. Oh, just a word of um, advice. When you're working with brushes, white and black need to be completely black and white. So the background that you want to be your alpha has to be proper black and proper white. And the way to find those two is very easy. Go to Classic Color Picker, take your dot, whoops, this little dot here, and take it all the way to the bottom corner and then check it in value and you'll see it's all the zeros hash zero 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 <laughs> and then if you want white you put it all the way in the top corner like that and you can check it in value and it's um there. there's also i'm going to walk you through how to do this on the disk setting if you Go into the disk and then double tap on the edges in quick su succession. You can get a true black if you're in the black area in, on the inner ah. circle. Um, oh, and then you double tap on the white and it gives you pure white. Yeah. Perfect. And then you can also get a good mid-tone on the color, a darker. 
Um, this is fantastic. Yeah. Color picker, but it's still. Um, you can also there. pinch um, to expand it. Oh, really? The circle. Yeah. So if you if you go back in and drag it out. Isn't that cool? <laughs> that is cool. Okay. So and then you can pinch down again if you if you want to hide it. Okay, so we've got our shape ready and we've got pure black because our little mouse is on black. And now the edges are all weird and um, different colors and whatever. So let's go and find a ordinary smooth brush. Hang on here, I've got one here. Normal smooth. Um, then we're just going to use our black to fill in all the space around the edge. And then if it's still weird and, and irritating and there's still yucky gray bits, go to curves and hit layer. Oh, sorry. First of all, go to um, hue, saturation, brightness. And we just want it in black and white, no color involved. So you take the saturation slider and boom, down to zero. And then go to curves. And now you can adjust the black and white balance and you can make sure that your black is very black and your white is very white. So see here, I have so now we have our white shape on a black background and we can use it as a shape to make a brush because um, we have that alpha sorted out around the edges and it's not going to make a weird um, ghosty square stamping around it. So yeah. A brush with that shape. And it's specifically for the shape not the grain that you're saying that you need that true alpha, correct? Exactly. So let's see, there he is. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, let's just check it. Look, oh, okay. There's a little bit, you can see that there was a little bit over here that maybe needed to be blackened a bit in my original. Yeah, so that's you making a brush so you can practice that. I'm glad that happened because it's a good demonstration. Where is it there? Let's go and get that other brush that we had before. And we can make that disappear. A little problem, how you say disappear. There you go. Cool. Let's try again, see if we've got it. I know nobody wants this brush <laughs> down mouse, but anyway. It's a good example. And Might if you that. have downloaded the Procreate Pocket app, you uh, can make brushes within there that match those within the full iPad app now too. Yes, exactly. And because the your iPhone is so much more um, portable, you can walk around the neighborhood going, wow, that piece of concrete is gorgeous. Take a photo, instantly make a texture brush out of it. Oh, look at that tree. Amazing. Look at that cat. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so convenient. And yeah. again, like they match up almost perfectly. The only difference in the brush studio, if... Uh, if you're wanting them to align between your iPad and your iPhone is that there's no Apple Pencil support for the Pocket app on your phone because unfortunately you can't use yeah. a Apple Pencil on your phone. But besides that, all of the other settings are aligned. And so then you can transfer them back and forth, which is very yeah. cool as well. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? I, I think we've gotten everything so far. Um, let me just run through and check. If you have any last minute questions, drop them. Um, but we will get the files sorted for you immediately after once we get offline. And um, if you are practicing and you come up with questions, you can shoot them over to us and we'll address them in the next session. Um, and uh, yeah, any, any specifics that you wanna learn within the Brush oh. Studio? 
I just um, wanted to show you something. Um, right at the beginning when we were talking about the shape and we were talking about how um, having your canvas drawing guide on is very helpful. Um, let me show you why. Am I still on? No. So let's say I want to make a grass brush that makes some um, tufts of lawn. Um, this is very pointy. Okay, so I've got my little bit of lawn there. If you put your lawn over there, the center of the lawn is actually the top of the blades of grass. And as you draw it, um, any size difference that you want to add to the jitter, etc., is going to happen along the edges, not the center. So that's not going to work. So let's put it so that the base of the lawn is in the center. And we'll use it as our shape. Um, let's make a new brush. Shape, edit, import, paste, invert. Right, now we want the shape to follow the brush stroke, obviously. We also want it not to always be oriented to the screen. We want it to follow the brush instead of the orientation of the screen. And let's see how far apart we want it. Maybe a bit closer. Apple Pencil, we don't want that. But we do want it a little bit bigger so we can see it. Okay. Ooh. So, let's see what we've done. So now you can see the base of the lawn is going to be where the tip of the pencil is. Yeah. When you draw the base of the lawn, it, the center of the square is always the tip of the pencil. So let's see how it would be if you didn't put the base of your shape in the center. That is a super helpful point. Because I think um, I've definitely used brushes where it feels like there's that gap between exactly. where you're drawing. Offset, yes. Yeah. So let's say we've done that and we've put it down there because we think, oh, grass is at the bottom. That's where I'm going to put it. Um, and we've decided, oh, we want some size jitter. And now we're done. And watch. The jitter happens like that. But the point of the pencil remains where the center of the square is. So the top of your lawn is all the same, but the bases of the lawn are different. But if you, whoopsie, I drew that on the layer. But if you rather put the base of the lawn in the center of the pencil, so the base of the lawn is gonna match with the tip of your pencil. And now you can see Make a new layer. You can see that the bottom of the grass stays in one place where the ground is and the grass goes up and down how you actually wanted it in the beginning. Unless that it's is not so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's how you, um, that's why um, setting your canvas, um, uh, what's it called? Drawing guide. Just, guide drawing guide setting the drawing guide up is really helpful not necessarily for using it actually to guide how you're drawing but rather to show you where the center of the canvas is so you know where your pencil is going to be in relation to the shape that you've made so for example your question about the hard edge watercolor brush i'm not going to show you the whole thing of making it but let's say you want something that is um going to have a tonal gradient from the center of the brush to the edge let's say um, yeah, let's go back to my favorite yeah um, like that and then let's do motion blur oh hang on let me just duplicate it first whoop it didn't stay okay 
right. So that's the center. This bit we want hanging off the edge like that. This is going to be a really wonky brush, so don't um, don't be too critical. So let's go to our grass brush and duplicate it because we don't want to go through the whole process again. Insert. Okay, we don't want it to jump like that, and we actually want it to be a bit closer together. So here we go. We've got a brush that the one edge is dark and the other edge is got some opacity difference. It will be um, that opacity will look smoother if you put it on light glaze or uniform glaze. Right? Uniform blending. You choose which one you like best. See. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So deciding where the center of your canvas is and where the center of the shape is going to be in re relation to the center of your pencil is very important when you're making a brush. Yeah, no, that's super helpful. And I love the grass example. It makes me want to do like a tree brush so you can do quick and easy tree lines. Yeah, there's there's so much fun that you can have with that. Was there anything else that we needed to talk about? I think that was it for this session. I wanted to let everybody know I've replaced the files. That was totally my fault with the um, them not importing. So you should be able to access them from the Dropbox now. Just hit reload if you already have the tab open on your oh, on your browser. There is a brush that I included in there just for fun as like a little gift. Oh yeah. It is, <laughs> It is the brush that I made because um, it was fun. Where is it now? Oh, B related there. Um, it's this black brush. It's called um, Blowfly. And it's basically, you pick the color teal because, or, or blue if you want a blue one. Um, and you just paint and it makes flies. Yeah, it's so, whatever, so cool. Whatever color you want for his body, just pick it and it'll make flies. Oh, Kira says that your earrings are very entertaining. Did you make your earrings? Yes, I did. <laughs> They're beautiful. <laughs> cool. All right. So we will be back with session two. Um, oh, Angel Song asks if Abby is going to make more videos on her channel. Yes, eventually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> TBD. And um, if you're not already subscribed to Abby's channel, um, that should be linked in the description. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a video. And uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram and tag if you post any brushes that you've made. Um, yeah. Throw us a tag as well. Our handles are in the description too. Thank you so much for joining us. Cool. Bye, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>